Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Tim Kaiser. I'm from Oklahoma City. I teach at Oklahoma Baptist University. I direct the instrumental ensembles and teach music education courses. It is great to be here. Thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun. Um, a little background on this music specifically. Um, in graduate school at the University of Arizona in Tucson, um, I don't know if any of you have done a graduate degree in music, but they don't put you up in the most uh, luxurious of accommodations. Uh, my office uh, housed the personal belongings and music of three kind of giants of our profession, uh, Nelson Riddle, um, Jack Lee, and then Frank Simon, uh, who is the subject of today's presentation, uh, who was Sousa's cornet soloist, succeeded Herbert L. Clark in that capacity, uh, who for 10 years uh, was a national celebrity, star of his own radio program, um, and uh, then dedicated the rest of his life to music education. He founded the band program at the Cincinnati Conservatory. Uh, he is a giant in our profession, um, but uh, I said to somebody earlier today, this is probably the only room in the country I can walk into and people will know who Frank Simon was. Um, unfortunately, like a lot of giants, his name has been lost to history. But imagine my delight when I found uh, in the files of about 3,400 uh, pieces that, that were his personal collection, uh, five marches that he had composed. Um, unfortunately, they weren't playable as they were. A lot of them were in manuscript form. Uh, there were wrong notes, there were missing measures, there were just uh, a whole bunch of issues that needed to be corrected before they could even be played. And hence these performance editions, these are not arrangements, uh, but these are corrected editions of these marches. And now they can finally be played. Uh, the Little Giant was written for Jack Lee, the director of bands at the University of Arizona during the 50s and 60s. Um, Simon spent 10 years at the university kind of teaching part-time in retirement. He was grateful to Jack Lee for the opportunity. He had kind of helped Jack Lee get started in the profession during World War II, and uh, he wrote this in tribute to him. Uh, Jack Lee was small in stature, uh, but a giant in the profession and, and apparently kind of a fiery personality. So this, this kind of pokes affectionate fun at that. This march has never been played. Uh, outside of the building in which it now resides. Um, so this will be the first performance, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, of this march ever um, outside of the music building at the University of Arizona. Right? So looking forward to this very much, the little giant. I'll show you two and we're in.
don't know much about the Statesman March, other than what you have on the park, dedicated to James L. Brown, who is the editor of the Iowa Statesman newspaper. It's another one of those newspaper marches. <laughs> Washington Post, Chicago Tribune, things like that among them. Now we have the Statesman. Um, from a purely musical standpoint, this is my favorite of the Simon marches I found. Um, there are three others. I may just have to come back another year. Um, but uh, this one existed in handwritten manuscript form. Uh, there's a sketch in pencil uh, with corrections in ink, which I incorporated into this. There was also a previously published edition, but it was self-published out of Simon's home by his wife, who was not a musician, uh, but who was a dedicated copyist. And uh, so she published a lot of his own music. Uh, I'm sure her intentions were good, but uh, going back and forth between that and the manuscript, I discovered a whole lot of errors and inconsistencies, which are uh, rectified in this current edition. <laughs> this one's been played in public, um, but it's still a rarity. So the state's <laughs> We're missing a part. Oh, okay. Well, we'll soldier on. 